Hi, my name is Noma Langham Sally Moses from Healthy Black Woman and Successful Black Woman. Um, I'm here today with my friend Patrice Johnson. Patrice Johnson, you may know her as um, the beauty blogger who does amazing things with makeup. I've watched her videos. I suggest you do too. She also blogs for a prolific online blog for black women called Naturally Moi. And you may have seen her YouTube segments where she does daddy and uh, daughter discussions with uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins. How are you doing today, Patrice? I'm doing great, Normalang. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, I'm excited about the topics that we've chosen today. Um, do you want to start us off with the first topic? Well, first, I think that we should introduce ourselves. We are the new segment on the Your Black World channel, also known as Your Black Women. So this will be a segment where a bunch of girls just get together and we just have girl talk and we just talk about the things that are important to black women, right? Okay. Absolutely. Um, I'm excited about that. Yes, me too, me too. So if you ladies are excited and you want to hear a black woman's perspective, then don't forget to click in twice a week, twice a week. Um, now, first, what we're going to talk about is this article that I've seen by Sarah Bobalt. And it's called The Happiest Relationship Ever. Now, let me just say that when I first saw that article, I was like, this article can't be real because there's no such thing as the happiest relationship ever. Like, she almost made it sound too perfect, you know what I mean? And I actually read it, mm -hmm. and I was really intrigued. A lot of the things that she said made a lot of sense. And it was just like, why haven't I thought of this stuff? <laughs> that she put out um she put out because i also read the article and um some of the tips i was like oh yeah that sounds like it makes sense and then some of them i was like mm, i don't know about that yeah. so because <laughs> i remember one of them said something to the effect of it doesn't really matter if you're married or not as long as you're committed you can live together and be happy um now <laughs> for some people that works for me for instance i believe in marriage and family and i was like ah, i don't no, I've seen too many studies, for instance, that say that, um, you know, marriage offers security and safety for most people, and those people tend to enjoy better health and longer lives. So I was kind of confused, like, why did they say that? But again, it was a report based on studies and uh, gathering information. So I had to at least consider that the information had some, some of the things that on that list that they said make a relationship work. Yeah, well, I definitely think that it's individualistic. Um, for me, I really don't know if I care for marriage or not because at the end of the day, marriage is pretty much an agreement where if I die, you get everything that I've ever had. We are on the same health care. We have the same benefits. But it's almost like being boyfriend and girlfriend for the rest of your life, which in the same breath, I know a lot of people who have been my one of my very, very close family members. She's like my mentor. I actually, I call her my grandmother. She's not my biological grandmother, but I love her like a grandmother. She has been <laughs> with the man that she's been married to for three years. They were boyfriend and girlfriend for 18 years. And that was the longest wow. relationship that she has ever had. And that was her third marriage. And that was his third marriage. And that was the longest relationship that he had ever had. So I wow. guess in, in some ways, marriage does work if the two people agree that this is what they both want. But right. there are some people who say, I don't want marriage. And if they both want the same thing, then it can it can work no matter how, no matter what other people say. You know what I mean? So even if children right. are being brought right. into the marriage. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, I believe what I believe, but I'm open to the fact that sometimes people will believe something different and do something different, and uh, it would it could work for them. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly how I feel. It could work. Like, some people don't want children, but other people may think that that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So it definitely could work. Um, now, the one that caught my eye, which because 
I'm, for those who don't know or don't believe me, I'm 25. I say it all the time, but they're like, you're not 25. I'm 25 years old, and so I live in the world where the internet has been very popular since I was 10 or 11 years old. You know, texting, mm-hmm. messaging, things like that. This uh, article actually said that texting is what can deteriorate your relationship. So, like, if you're in an argument with your spouse and you guys are arguing back and forth via via text message instead of actually calling each other, that can definitely make a difference in your relationship. And I totally have not thought about that, but that makes so much sense because texting, it doesn't seem as emotional. It doesn't seem to grab your attention as much, and it doesn't seem like you're giving a person as much of your attention, whereas actually calling a right. person... It's immediate. I can hear your voice. I know that you, I can tell from your, the way that you speak that you, whether you are, whether you are feeling emotional or emotionless, I can tell so many things through a phone call versus just a text message. How do you feel about that? Um, I completely agree. I think that um, it's a, it's about intimacy. Um, texting somebody feels like an afterthought. I could text while I'm, cooking, watching TV, doing all kinds of things. So it kind of tells you that I'm not willing to give you my my full attention. Right. Um, and then the other thing that I can say about messenger and text and stuff is, um, you know, communication um, can get lost in translation. Um, I'm not sure what you actually mean because I don't know the tone of your voice. I'm not seeing expressions on your face. I can't. I can't really know for sure. Um, whereas when you have an intimate conversation with a person, I mean, a phone a phone call is better, but I think face to face is even better. Um, of course, that makes for a better relationship. Um, and I, I wouldn't te- te- go texting my husband back and forth um, if we're having a serious conversation. I text him, you know, bring some milk home. You know, those are the things you send via text. Um, <laughs> uh, but. More more important things, of course, you have to give the person that you love your time and attention and show them that they come first and you're putting everything away. So, absolutely. And we, we can't forget about the fact that a lot of relationships have ended because somebody sent a text and it didn't go through because they have wacky phone service. So I definitely right. think that plays a big part in it because you have a cricket phone <laughs> and I have AT&T and your cricket just didn't connect. <laughs> <laughs> so they can play a huge right. part. <laughs> right. Um, so, what other points did you see in this story that really caught your eye, really caught your attention? Um, well, one of the things that they said, um, again, the one that I mentioned first was the one where they were t- talking about. Um, you know, whether you're married or not. And again, um, I'm, you know, full disclosure, I really believe in marriage and family. So my, my, I was already taken aback, like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> um, but they said, they made it some points which I agreed with. Um, and I can even say from my own relationship experience and so forth is I think that um, spending time together, spending meaningful time together um, is how you build a, a relationship. There's a saying that says absence makes the heart fonder, um, but I actually think it's almost the opposite. Um, if somebody's absent all the time, you can forget about them. Um, and uh, so it is important to carve out time to spend with the person you care about, um, and that's one of the things that I believe to be true, um, showing them that, that they're important to you and spending time with them. You know, spending quality time with a person does make a huge difference in whether your relationship lasts or not. But another thing is I think consistent time with a person is what matters the most. Because if you are telling me right. that you love me and you want to see me and this and that, and you don't come and see me, that's one thing. But if you do come and see me, but it's only when you're bored or when you don't have anybody else to talk to <laughs> or you want to hang out with me one day and then I don't hear from you for two months. That's the problem. I need someone who is consistent. If we hang out twice a week, then let it be twice a week. If we hang out four times a week, let it be four times a week. But don't try and come into my life and leave whenever you feel like it's necessary because then that's a problem. What do you think about right. that? Um, I think I think that's a that's the difference, you know, between having a relationship and actually being married to a person. You know, no matter what happens, I have to come home every day. <laughs> 
and my husband has to come home every day. So whether he likes it or not, he's seeing me every day. Right. Um, so th that kind of does away with that thing of the inconsistency. Um, and I guess then it turns into the quality of the time because a person can be there and you can be there, but you're not really connecting. Um, so it does require it to be consistent and also that you're actively connecting with one another. Um, but I do want to say that it's also important, um, and I think that was one of the other points, was um, you give each other a little bit of space and freedom as well. Um, you have to have your own separate interests as well as interests that you have together. Um, so there has to be a balance of, okay, we have our time together, we spend our time together, we enjoy ourselves, we enjoy each other's company, but at the same time, uh, I want to hang out with my girlfriend sometimes, or I want to sit and read my book and not have anybody bother me sometimes, and I shouldn't take it personally when you require time for yourself as well. Right, right. Yeah, I definitely think that hanging out too much can make the heart grow fonder <laughs> for somebody else. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and I saw this one. And tell me how you feel about this because you're a mom of some beautiful kids. So tell me how you feel about children. It says couples with no children, married or not, if they don't have any children, they tend to be happier. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. I can see. Um, I mean, I don't agree absolutely, but I can absolutely see why they made that point. Okay. Um, Think about it, the time when you first bring a baby home. This baby feeds every two hours, regardless of whether it's time, what time it is, whether it's night or day. So in terms of you being the mom and dad in the home, which is the ideal situation, um, that means you're really getting not much sleep, and that could go on for six weeks or it could go on for six months. That is almost unbearable. Yes. It is almost unbearable. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, I dare you to ask a person who's going through that how happy they are with their life as a, compared to a time when they could sleep as much as they want and they had as much freedom as they wanted. Uh, <laughs> it's a no-brainer, right? Um, so, you know, much as we, you know, we love our kids, um, I have two kids. I have a stepdaughter, so I have three so far, and I have another one on the way. So, obviously, kids are a blessing, um, and it's a beautiful thing to be a mom. Um, so I'm not negating that, but I, it's not um, it's not a bed of roses all the time. You have to go through some of the hard times and make a lot of sacrifices. And one of the things that I can tell you is that before I ever got married and had kids, I was a very self-involved person. It was all about me. Everything was all about me. And when kids come into that equation, um, they teach you that, yeah, it's not really about you. And for a while, while you're making that adjustment, it can make you a little bit unhappy in the sense that um, you have to worry about other people and not just about yourself. And it can feel like they're taking a lot from you. The rewards are many, but you can't pretend that it's just a bed of roses all the time. Right. Well, I definitely yeah. agree with you by saying, you know, that you realize that it's not all about you. But I, that's why I think that I don't. I, I really don't know what the tradition or the culture is in Botswana, but I know here I've met a lot of black women who, not not all, but a lot of black women who have children mm -hmm. and they weren't ready. And it's almost mm -hmm. like if you weren't ready, you shouldn't have been doing what you were doing in order to produce those children. <laughs> and I know I know right. I sound like, you know, an old lady, but it's true. I don't have any children. And let me say, right. I'm living footloose and fancy free. I spoil myself to death. And I love that. But the day that I do right. decide to become a mom, it's going to be my choice. It's not going to be by accident. It's not going to be by irresponsibility. Right. It's going to be because I was ready. I definitely, right. think, I definitely think that children can make relationships a little, not, not worse, but a little more difficult, I guess you could say. Not a little bit, a lot. Oh, okay. Well, no, no, like a lot. lot. <laughs> but I do think that children do change the dynamic because now it's at the point where you and the father have to compromise on how you are going to take care of this baby. Because at the end of the day, the baby can't take care of itself. And I think a lot of men, they right. want their wives to get pregnant. They want these big families. And then when they see what it's really like, they're like, well, damn, maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah. 
are considerate of each other and the things that they have to do like chores and taking care of kids um, they feel like it's evenly distributed you're helping out I'm helping out no, where it's not falling on one person and that's part of it is that um, sometimes that distribution is not equal and that's what can make some people angry resentful and so forth um, but you know having been married for some years one of the things the lessons that I learned about um, being with another person is, you know, it's a service position. You have to take on the approach of, um, I'm here to serve this person. Um, and obviously, they should be in the same position where they're serving you. So it's not you serving them and then them serving themselves. Um, so, you know, it's a give and take. If you have somebody who's there that's supporting, encouraging, and is there serving you, and you're also doing things for them, it can work and it can make your relationship better. But if it's on the opposite end of the spectrum where you have two selfish people who are in it for themselves, that can cause a relationship to be toxic and fail. So that was one of the things it was about um, an equal distribution or a fair distribution of chores and responsibilities. That makes sense. That makes a yeah. ton of sense. Because if it's one-sided, then somebody's going to be unhappy. Somebody's, I don't care what you say, somebody's going to be unhappy. Somebody's going to be they're feeling unhappy. Like, they're right. feeling like even though they put in so much work, they're not getting back what they deserve. So I totally right. get that. Okay. Yeah. Now tell me what you think about this one. Let's uh, make that our last one. What's that? Yeah. I'm saying let's make that our last one. Oh, okay. No, I'm laying aside. Um. Yeah. Early fighting. <laughs> How do you feel about early fighting? Fighting earlier on in the relationship just so that you can have a better relationship towards the end. Because basically what she was saying was if you get out all of the dirty stuff um, from your past, you know, secrets, things like that, if you get that out in the beginning, then the person can decide if they want to be with you or not. And then toward the end right. or, you know, later in the relationship, it's a little better. How do you feel? Right. Um, well, I think what they're talking about is um, conflict, when you have conflict, disagreements, um, and stuff like that. One of the things that I've realized with people who maybe don't have good relationship skills is they avoid fighting or they avoid conflict altogether. And the truth is there's nothing wrong with disagreeing. There's nothing wrong with conflict. Um, and actually, the idea is how you handle the conflict. Um, and if you're mature about it, if your disagreements always come down to blaming, shaming, accusing, and turning mean and nasty and name calling, and this is a reality for a lot of people, um, then of course you're going to try and avoid fighting. But the truth is when people are angry, a lot of times they tell the truth. Um, sometimes they say things that they don't mean, but they do tend to tell the truth and they tell it in a straightforward way. So that's good. You get good information. Um, and then the other thing is then over time you'll acquire the skills to be able to tell the truth or to confront your partner or your spouse um, without it turning into a dog fight where you're just telling each other the truth, you agree to disagree, or you compromise, negotiate, or whatever it is. So definitely, I think that's actually a good thing, and a relationship stands a good chance when you're having constant conflicts, because what happens is down the line, if you have no conflict, or you have conflict but you ignore it, um, it's actually dying a slow death. <laughs> never thought of it that way i mean be, me i just i date so i'm not really married i'm still in the early stages of getting to know people but i guess what you just said actually makes some really really good points so thank you so much namalanga for having this conversation with me i'm very happy that we got to talk today and got to get your black one your black women i'm sorry um rolling so that black women can have a place to come express themselves would you like to say anything before we close this out? Oh, no. I, just the same thing, the same sentiment that, you're, uh, that you expressed. I'm so glad that we're the first two people to launch uh, Your Black Women, and we're looking forward to many more se segments um, and great topics and just a lot of fun. And um, over the next few days and weeks, people will start to meet the other uh, women of Your Black World. Yes, beautiful. So thank you, Patrice. Thank you My so much. Pleasure. Thank you so much. 
And so, guys, it's your black women. You have Patrice Johnson and Miss No Moranga. And we will see you guys next time. Don't forget to tune in. We will be posting more videos. Please like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you think, what you want to know, what you want to hear, what you want to see. This is the channel where black women keep it real. So, until next time, I will see you guys later. And No Moranga, I will be talking to you again soon. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>